Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk about uh, new technology and also talk about maybe some old methods of doing things uh, a little bit more efficiently. Um, I have uh, a big uh, uh, disclosure for this uh, talk. This is uh, Nuvasive technology. I work with Nuvasive extensively, uh, so therefore I am conflicted. So know that. Uh, goals of uh, spinal deformity surgery are obviously to decompress the neural elements, to stabilize and fuse, and to preserve or and or restore alignment. Uh, we all know about poor alignment and uh, disability. Uh, we know about compensation mechanisms involving the pelvis. Uh, we also know about the uh, incredibly increased muscular energy that we must use when the lumbar spine is flat. Uh, we know from our uh, literature that when the plumb line shifts anteriorly, there is increasing disability, uh, with the most disability seen in the case of lumbar kyphosis. Um, loss of lumbar lordosis, especially when we do that to patients, is especially poor to poorly tolerated uh, and has a direct effect on disability. So this is one of our big pushes in, in the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, for those of you that have ever attended a Scoliosis Research Society meeting, you'll see a, a large uh, effort and a large number of papers uh, around uh, defining what success is radiographically. And uh, Virginia is going to talk a little bit about this uh, from a software standpoint afterwards as well. Uh, we know that uh, uh, if we don't um, uh, develop the right uh, uh, radiographic profile from a sagittal standpoint, we have a much higher risk of, of uh, reoperation. This is old work from 1997 showing us that two-thirds of our lordosis needs to live between L4 and S1. Uh, we also know that these are clinically relevant. Now, this is a lot of this work uh, from, the, uh, from the Schwab class, the Schwab SRS classification, uh, and we've seen uh, a lot of work uh, follow from this. And uh, you know these parameters, that we need a, a harmonious PILL uh, uh, relationship, uh, less than 10 degrees, what's noted there. There are going to be age-appropriate targets for that, uh, and we'll see more work of that uh, in the coming uh, years. But uh, we want to get these harmonious. Um, and we want to get this SVA uh, to this number to get an appropriately balanced patient. And obviously, uh, uh, we have uh, thought about this uh, as deformity surgeons as to what our categories are. Um, and most surgical candidates are in the aligned to compensated range. However, uh, the consequences of, of the failure to provide correct alignment, um, again, includes this disability we talked about uh, increased uh, adjacent level concerns uh, with stress, stress at the caudal uh, and cephalad aspects of the construct, as well as adjacent level disease. Um, so DGEN cases is probably a place where, where this is even more important than in deformity cases. Uh, and, and when you're doing smaller constructs, this is really important to note. And I'm going to show you a little bit of our algorithm uh, that we have standardized around using some of these tools. So these are two patients with the same lumbar lordosis, but totally different pelvic incidence. And if you're not measuring these routinely, uh, you can create uh, a, a suboptimal uh, condition for this patient. Okay, focal perspectives don't tell you much. Okay, great, high five, got an inner body t lift in there. Uh, uh, you have a reasonable fusion, you've decompressed the neural elements, patient's happy. However, we really need to think about the regional perspective uh, and measure uh, these x-rays uh, both uh, before surgery, as Dr. Lieberman taught you about really uh, not going to the cockpit without a, without a flight plan. At the same time, uh, this is all dynamic and changing, and we need to be able to do this more predictably and more reproducibly. So this is, uh, these slides are from Nuvasive. This is uh, a technology that I've been using for quite some time now. Um, uh, we uh, make it a part of our algorithm for going to surgery for any instrumented spine surgery. So whether it's a large uh, deformity or whether it's a simple L4-5 fusion for spondylolisthesis, we utilize this technology for all of it. Uh, and here's why. Part of it is, is tools to calculate alignment. Part of it is surgical intervention. What are you actually going to do as you come uh, forward with your plan? Are you going to utilize anterior column support in the term in, in, with an ALIF ACR, or are you going to use an XLIF ACR? What are you going to do in your posterior column? Are you going to use tools like Bendini, for example? 
Uh, and then how are you going to confirm your alignment? What are the tools to do this? So the first one is a technology called Nuvaline. This is uh, 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 from the company. Uh, this is a technology that's available on an iPhone or on an iPad. Um, and as you can see here, Virginie uh, uh, knows a lot more about this than me. So um, uh, you know, she's one of the pioneers in, in doing some of this work. But you can measure all your parameters. So in your training programs, one of the first things that my fellows do is they download the software and they're using this and they're communicating with me using the software. There's no ifs, ands, or buts on the morning of surgery. We know what we're doing and we're able to calculate all of these parameters well before surgery. Um, these things are then saved into a drive on your iPhone. Surgeon Map has the exact same software, I think, Virginie. Um, where you can communicate virtually uh, between team members, so residents, fellows, attendings can all, can all uh, um, communicate about it. So uh, this then leads to the intraoperative portion, which is the NUVA map, uh, which is, remember, spinal alignment is dy dynamic, right? So is your patient standing or are they lying down? What happens to the spine when you put the patient prone and you extend the hips? This all takes that into account. So again, um, uh, this is a, a, a preoperative software, and I'm going to show you uh, how we measure the parameters and then how we translate to that to the operating room. So if you look here, here's a uh, significantly forwardly flexed patient. Um, uh, as uh, uh, this goes, again, measuring the parameters. We're not going to teach you how to measure the parameters. We're just going to show you the technology. Uh, you can learn how to do that on your own if you're not doing that already. Uh, obviously, we think that's really important, particularly if you're doing long segment fusion surgery, but I would tell you, even if you're doing simple spinal surgery, uh, this is really important. So then you, well before the surgery, uh, just taking the flight plan idea, if I'm flying my plane from, from Seattle to New York, uh, there's probably uh, different routes based on uh, wind patterns, based on uh, uh, how much fuel you're going to consume, based on what the uh, uh, traffic is in the area, landing at JFK or Newark or where you're going. But clearly, this is the same idea. You are looking at the constraints of the patient, whether they've been operated on the front before, whether they've been operated from the side before, uh, what their comorbidities are. Uh, I'll talk to you about the use of the Toyota production system a little bit later today, but around building the plan, right? This is an e equivalent part of the plan. So before these ca cases go to a multidisciplinary conference, this has already been done. You can add the graphs that you need uh, and figure out what you want to do. Then there's the idea of transferring that data to the operating room. You already know that your options are, and again, all companies have this. This is obviously uh, a single company here, but uh, are you going to do a T lift? Are you going to do an X lift? Are you going to do an ACR either from the front or from the side? You can figure all this out and plug it into your data, and then you have your posterior options here. And what we're trying to do with this technology is try to standardize our approaches within our own institution to where the operation goes more smoothly, number one. Uh, you don't have uh, 25 excessive trays opened up in the back, which leads to waste and inefficiency in the operating room. Uh, and you're providing a predictable alignment goal, okay? And this all centers around using a platform that allows you to dynamically measure these numbers. So this is the Nuva, uh, the, the uh, Nuva Map platform or the N N NVM5 platform building on an existing OR uh, footprint. Uh, it's uh, 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 integral to the, to the technology. And then there's rod bending uh, tools like Bendini that follow from this. Um, uh, and the intraoperative assessment is key. Um, uh, Nuva Map is uh, now standardized in our operating rooms, just uh, literally a couple blocks down the road here. Um, any spine fusion surgery in the lumbar spine, uh, the Nuva Map is hooked up and we know what the parameters are so that if we have an L4-5 spondylolisthesis that's a grade one and there's a 25 degree mismatch of lordosis and incidence, we know that well before and we're able to uh, make our, uh, our calculations based on that. Now, this changes as you position the patient. You might pay, pay more attention to positioning the patient based on NuvaMap. I feel like we pay a ton more attention to how we position these patients because we are really trying to maximize our lumbar lordosis. And as we do these procedures, we're assessing the lordosis in a dynamic fashion. This is the posterior rod bending technology that can follow from that. I do not use the posterior rod bending uh, technology, but you can. So here's a PILL mismatch of 21 degrees. Okay, you can see here after positioning. 
you can see here, as we add our graphs, we are reducing that number. And in a dynamic fashion, we know that we have a provided harmonious alignment, uh, and there's no guessing. The final portion is, is uh, uh, again, technology that I do not use, uh, but this was uh, uh, something that was additional uh, to help us preserve the aligned spine. And then there are other ideas around sagittal bending, coronal straightening, um, and the ability to bend different types of rods, which allows you to restore the malaligned spine. So again, just, to, just to some ideas about how you think about this and why using SurgeonMap software I think is the place to start. Uh, training your trainees how to use SurgeonMap software, you using SurgeonMap software, I think is the first place to start. I'm not conflicted in that realm because uh, even though Virginia is my friend, uh, we, 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 I have no uh, financial ties with that. I'm just telling you, I think it provides a more predictable result. So here's a patient uh, with a very high pelvic incidence uh, who needs a lot of lumbar lordosis. And you can see there that preoperative lumbar lordosis is only 27 degrees. So this is a case where we use Exlif ACR uh, um, to get the alignment. Uh, here's another patient with uh, the lumbar kyphosis, but this patient is very different than the one I just showed you. Their pelvic incidence is only 45 degrees. So in this case, you really uh, do not need as much of a uh, restorative capacity. But again, uh, thinking about how you're going to do this. Here's a case where there's a fixed uh, thoracolumbar kyphosis in, in which we utilized a 30 degree exlif ACR at the thoracolumbar junction to get this alignment. But again, utilizing these tools uh, is very important. So I'll, I'll just uh, finish um, um, in 10 minutes total here uh, about the downsides of radiation uh, and how much MIS increases radiation uh, to ourselves, our patients, and the staff in the room. So uh, uh, these great companies that are that are here represented today are working on this tech on this. And um, Nuvasiv has a technology that they're working on called Less Ray, where uh, everyone in the room uh, benefits from a 75% uh, decrease in exposure. There are also uh, tools uh, that you can use. Uh, uh, again, this is still in development um, as to how. Uh, uh, we can make this safer, more reproducible as, uh, with significantly less uh, radiation. So uh, technology is very important um, um, in, the, in, the, in the utilization of, of any uh, of our intraoperative philosophies and the, uh, seeing them uh, to fruition. But what's really important is, is uh, all doing it within a, uh, a confine of safety uh, and increasing uh, value both uh, uh, to the patient and to society. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, this afternoon. So thanks for having me. Appreciate it.